I've got a nice integral for you today. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of x squared plus one over x to the fourth plus seven x squared plus one. And if you didn't have a, like a nice trick to solve this, the standard strategy that you would use that you might learn in an integral calculus class would be to factor this denominator into irreducible quadratics. And then after that, do some sort of partial fraction decomposition ending with some sort of trigonometric substitution, perhaps. And I say that because we've got a rational function here and we know that the denominator here can be factored into irreducible quadratics based off the fact that there are no real roots, which, which I won't check, but that's pretty easy to check. But luckily there's a much nicer trick in this case and this trick essentially has the effect of reducing this denominator from being a quartic polynomial to a quadratic polynomial. Okay, so let's see what we'll do first. I'll start by doing something similar to completing the square in the denominator. And let's begin with the following observation. And that will be x squared minus 1 quantity squared equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. So that's what we get from multiplying this thing out. So what does that tell us about the denominator? So that means our denominator is 9x squared plus x squared minus 1 squared. And we see that because if we add 9x squared to this, that clearly changes this negative 2x squared to a 7x squared. So that means I can take my integral and rewrite it just with this observation. So I have the integral from 0 up to infinity and then x squared plus one in the numerator, and then in the denominator I have nine x squared plus x squared minus one quantity squared dx. Great. And then next I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by one over x squared. So let's see what that'll leave me with. I have the integral from zero to infinity. I have one plus one over x squared. That's what happens to the numerator. And then to the denominator, I have nine plus, let's see, when I bring a one x, when I bring a one over x squared inside of the square, it turns into just one over x. So that'll cancel this x squared down to an x and leave me with minus one over x. And now it's kind of shaping up why this will work. So notice in the denominator I have nine, which is a nice perfect square, plus something squared. And in fact, this something which is inside of our square in the denominator has a derivative which is showing up in the numerator. So that's really what makes this whole thing work so nicely. Okay, so let's look at the substitution that we just alluded to by that observation. So let's maybe say it right here. So let's set u equal to x minus 1 over x. Now taking the derivative using the power rule, we get du is 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. We think about that 1 over x as x to the minus 1, so that's why the minus sign cancels. Okay, next up, let's notice if x approaches zero from above, which is what's happening in the lower bound of integration, we have u approaching negative infinity. Great, so that's pretty clear just by the structure of u. And then next, if x approaches positive infinity, we see that u is also approaching positive infinity. That's because this one over x term is approaching zero. Okay, so let's maybe box this off and keep it in mind as we rewrite our integral, which is now of the form minus infinity to infinity because those are our new u bounds of integration. And then we have du over nine plus u squared. But check it out. We've just arrived at a function that we know how to take the antiderivative of. 
Let's maybe not do that just yet. Let's first note that this is an even function and we're integrating over a symmetric domain. In other words, a domain that's split evenly by the origin. That means I can write this as twice the integral from zero to infinity of the same integrand. So du over nine plus u squared. But now, like I said, we know the antiderivative of that. That's gonna give us two over three, the inverse tan of, let's see, u over three. We need to evaluate that from zero up to infinity. So obviously the two comes from this right here, and then the threes in the denominator come from taking that antiderivative. If you want, you can do this with a bit of a substitution, although I don't think we really need to do that in this setting, all the, because this is kind of a standard antiderivative. But what you can do is factor in nine out of the denominator, and you're left with du over one plus u over three quantity squared. So that's how all of those threes end up in the denominator. Okay, so now let's do our evaluation. Obviously this upper bound evaluation is a limit as u is approaching infinity, which the arctan of infinity or that limit is pi over two. And then the arctan of zero is zero, so we get two thirds times pi over two. In other words, we have pi over three. Now I've done a bunch of integrals on the channel. Here's a little bit of a secret. Part of that is because I can do them fairly quickly and I like to get a video out every day. So I've done a lot of integrals on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now that you can check out if you'd like to. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.